Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you three exercises or patterns that you need to know if you want to get into some sort of ascending, fast picking or legato rock playing. Now these patterns are going to really, really help you build speed, build accuracy and they're going to lead on to learning many, many cool patterns for going up and down the fretboard. Stay tuned and I'll show you how to play them. In this video then we're going to be looking at foundation fundamental exercises or patterns for building speed ascending licks descending licks rock stuff from the 80s onwards you name it these three patterns are going to literally transform how you do all that stuff but if you haven't done it already give the video a like subscribe to the channel and click that alert bell so you don't miss any updates also if you want the tab and notation for everything i'm going to share in this video you'll see a free download for a pdf with a link in the description so recently then i asked on my facebook Facebook group my free Facebook group if you want to join you'll see a link below if there was any content anyone wants to see I also posted the same question on my Instagram and I had a ton of great great suggestions so thanks everyone for that and this is something that I've got asked quite a lot from people how to build speed and build rock licks now I spent many many years learning how to play super super fast and I absolutely love it and I kind of just went and I didn't go the wrong way about it but I certainly learnt big massive long patterns before I just broke down the fundamentals in order to build patterns speed and accuracy so in this video I'm going to show you three of the patterns that I just wish I'd practiced over and over again before learning longer licks which is what I'm going to get into on other videos this video is all about building the foundation and I'm going to show you then how you can develop that and create patterns and licks of your own so so like I said, there's only three we're going to be learning for major and minor scales. That's all you're going to need to know for the time being. And this is going to be pattern number one. <laughs> Okay, so that's the first pattern we're going to look at. Now, this is taken from G major or E minor, and it's a simple three note per string pattern. So we're going to start on the fourth fret on the D string. We're going to play four, five, seven on the D, and then we're going to play the exact same thing on the G. So four, five, seven, four, five, seven, and that is it. We're just simply going to go round and round that. And that is pattern number one, okay? So you can practice that picking as I was doing alternate picking, or you can use legato. So there I'm plucking down on the D string, up on the G. And that's the pattern. So for all of this stuff, I recommend practicing it using alternate picking and also legato just to build up both areas. Some people find they're stronger in one of the two things, possibly legato, you're stronger picking. That's okay, but I always recommend working on both areas, okay? So let's just get a metronome on. I'm gonna be playing triplets, which are one triplet, two triplet, one triplet, two triplet. And I put the metronome on at 60 BPM just so you can hear the pattern over and over again. I'll play a few using picking and then I'll move over to Legato, all sounds like this. Legato. Okay, and that's it at 60 BPM. Obviously, you can get faster and faster, but with all of this stuff, absolutely recommend just nailing it slowly first. Now, they might seem a little bit repetitive. Yes, they are, but when you transfer them over to scales, which is what we're gonna do in another video, you're gonna totally see the benefit of just isolating that pattern. So let me just speed that up a bit more. I'm gonna do this now at 80 BPM. <laughs> Legato. Okay, so that's picking and legato. Now, definitely, as I said, recommend just speeding it up slowly. I wouldn't jump up 20 BPM like I just did. That's just for demonstration purposes. Literally increase this slowly and gradually, okay? Speed is a byproduct of slow 
accurate, clean practice. What you want to do is get to a point where you're playing fast, but it just sounds like a big old mess. It's better to play it slow and accurate than fast and sloppy. So gradually speed this up. You're going to find a point anyway where you kind of plateau. So, you know, you might find 80 BPM easy. You might get to 100. It might be easy. And then you might start to get around by the 110 mark, for example, and it start getting a a bit of a struggle so just stay around that area okay don't go pushing it too far if you start pushing it too far too soon it, when you want to get to those fast speeds and sound like you know the rock guitar heroes it's going to sound like a big mess so slow accurate practice one thing i recommend doing is keeping note of these exercises and how fast you're going as well so keep a you know a little diary a journal a spreadsheet whatever and just say you know the date and the speed you were doing each of these exercises just so you can monitor your progress because sometimes if you're not using anything to kind of monitor where you're at it gets a bit overwhelming and a bit sort of defeatist of you know i'm practicing all this stuff but i'm not getting any faster but at least if you can sort of look back and go well actually two months ago i was only doing this at one bpm and now you're on a million bpm for example you can really notice the difference so with that let's get on here is pan number two <laughs> Okay, so very, very similar to pattern one, but what we're doing, we're gonna switch out our middle finger and use our ring finger instead. So rather than playing four, five, seven on each string, we're gonna be playing four, six, seven. Picked, hand ones and pull off the gato. Now most people find this one a little bit harder just because of the independence between your ring and your pinky. It is definitely a little bit harder so you might have to take a bit longer and go a bit slower with this to build up the strength in your little finger. So that's all it is, four, six, seven on the D, four, six, seven on the G. Okay, let's get the metronome on. Here it is at 60 BPM. And legato. Let's speed that up a bit. Here it is at seventy BPM. Okay, let's speed that up a bit. Here it is at 80 BPM. So do the same with this pattern. Gradually increase the metronome setting. Don't go too fast until you can play it clean and precise. So let's learn pattern number three. That sounds like this. Okay, so very, very similar again, but this time we're gonna be using our middle and our ring finger. So we're gonna get four, five, seven on the D, four, six, seven on the G. Okay, so let me just play that round a few times. And legato. Okay, so some of these patterns you might be thinking, hang on, they don't sound particularly great. That's not the point. The point of this for now is to build up the speed, the accuracy, and get these patterns into your fingers. Because what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to be using these patterns and play an ascending lick from the bottom of the fretboard all the way to the top. But before we do that, let's get the metronome on. Here is that pattern at 60 BPM. <laughs> Legato. Let's speed that up. Here it is at 70 BPM. And Legato.
And let's speed that up a bit more. Here it is at 80 BPM. Legato. Okay, so those are the three patterns you're going to need to know if you want to get into these fast three upper string shreddy or legato lines up and down the fretboard. These are just the building blocks, the foundations in this video. In another video, we're going to be learning at an entire pattern going up the fretboard. Okay, so this was pattern number one. Four, five, seven, four, five, seven. Pattern number two was four, six, seven, four, six, seven. Pattern three, four, five, seven, four, six, seven, four, five, seven, four, six, seven. Okay, if you want the tab of notation for everything I've covered in this video, you'll see a link to a free workbook in the description below. If you haven't done it already, click like to like the video, click subscribe to subscribe to the channel, and also click that alert bell so you don't miss any updates. If you want some more content from myself, come over and check out my online guitar school, fretlix.com. We've got loads of great courses, videos, and we do live streams. All the links are in the description below. Hope you enjoy that video, and I'll see you again soon.